So this is the original weekend cardigan that I made. I have absolutely loved this sweater. I've slept in it, I've worn it. Um, it's gotten some well love. The original yarn that I used is Buttercream Luxe Craft Mohair Metallic. It's 74% acrylic, 21% mohair, 4% metallic, and 1% polyamide. And I lost up oh, 188 yards in this game. It is almost two separate yarns that have been loosely plied together. And whenever you wrap it around your finger, you get eight wraps per inch. Now, one of the issues is that this yarn has been discontinued. Um, I've loved this yarn. I loved how the sweater felt. I've loved how it worked up. It was a little splitty, but um, it gave a nice softness. And that metallic was just enough sheen to make it look dressed up without being too uh, New Year's Eve sparkles. But, so since that is discontinued, I went around and I looked for some alternatives. Um, the other buttercream that possibly could work, I haven't used this before, is the Roving. Um, some other brands, Burnett has a Softy Chunky, Symphony, Lion Brain Scarfy, and Homespun, and Color Made Easy, Red Heart Higgy, I'm sure I pronounced that wrong, and Gemstone, and then what I ultimately ended up purchasing is the Burnett Freesia. Now, why I chose this one is if you look at the materials, it's 70% acrylic and 18% wool. I wanted something with wool. I like my sweaters to have some wool in it, and then 12% nylon. Plus, it has 309 yards. It was on sale at Joann's for $5.99 a skein. Getting four skeins to meet my yardage um, was a pretty affordable. Um, it was a pretty affordable sweater to make. Uh, bulky size five. If you do compare, when you compare yarn to yarn, it does appear does appear to be a little bit thicker. But I was able to work up a swatch and get my gauge to match what is called in the pattern. So that is what I chose. Some of the other brands um, do have a self-striping yarn. You'll want to be careful with that with how fast the color transitions. Just think about how your sweater will be. Um, the ones that are more of a traditional plied yarn will give you a more traditional uh, look of the stitch structures. I wanted something a little bit softer and fuzzier in appearance, so that's why I went with this um, Freesia by Bernat Yarn Inspirations. So for the body of the sweater, I have already made the body. And make sure I'm starting off right. So for the body of this sweater, you will chain work from the middle of the sweater through to where it ends for your shoulder. That has been one of the big questions. It is a different construction than most sweaters. So this is a big thing to note to really understand how the garment is made. And then for the decreases around the armhole, you will work up to a specified number of stitches. You stop and you turn around and you go back down. Then you go back up, a set number of stitches, stop and go back down. Each pattern will, uh, size will tell you a different amount of stitches and how many to get that set width and a nice curve for your arm opening. Then whenever you finish going over to a set amount, you will chain, work half double crochets into it, go back down, come back up, chain, and work half double crochets. And that's how you get these increases. And then you'll have one big long chain to work into to get that. For the middle of the back panel, you have another set of just working straight rows all the way across. And then what you did for the first arm opening, you come down, you come up, you stop giving you a set number of stitches unworked. And then you come back up, set number of stitches unworked, 
and then you start your increases to get back up to the same dimension as your front shoulder and your middle back. And then you work a set number of stitches and it'll tell you how to make buttonholes and all that good stuff so that it's super easy. You make two double half double crochets, you skip two chains, and then you work two half double crochets. Pretty simple. And then whenever you come back around, you just work as normal in those half double crochets. So now, since I have this back panel, or this body panel, all set to go, I am ready to work on the bottom edge. And I'll show you how to do that. So, what I do whenever I have a long dimension, I need to put in, I'm making a size small, I need to put 133 single crochets around this bottom edge. That's a lot to figure out and count and control. So I'm going to divide this up into smaller groups and take my stitch markers and chunk up how many I need to put every so often. So I've done the math and for the size small, if I grouped it up into six sections, I would need 22 stitches in each one of those sections and add in one more. Now, if I did eight sections, which would give me a smaller section and I could really fit in precisely a smaller amount of stitches, but I'd have to squeeze in five extra stitches. And that just gets a little bit too much work for me to figure out to randomly do it and make sure I did all those five. So I'm gonna do six sections. Now you do that. Just kind of halfway, so there's your two. And then I'm going to that out so I can work. Kind of just fold this into th thirds. Let's go the other way. So it's lined up and I have like a three piece sandwich and just loop it on there and loop it on here. Nothing too exact, too precise. You can get the ruler out, you can measure um, with crochet, I don't think you need to be super, super exact like you would in sewing. This will get me close enough and make sure I don't have too many in one area of the sweater and not enough in the other. Just a little general guideline. So there we go. So now I'm ready to take my yarn and single crochet 22 stitches in each one between these two points. And I know probably at one of the ends, I'll add in my extra. So let me do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've finished my single crochet around the bottom edge. I have my 133 stitches, my single crochets all across. With this yarn, it does make it a little bit more difficult to read what um, your stitch definition is. It, it's fuzzy yarn, so your stitches are gonna look a little bit fuzzy but hopefully as you work with it, you can really start seeing how those the yarn lays so you can see where to work. So now for the Make Bottom Beds band, step one, you chain two, and I'm gonna turn. And then it says beginning in second single crochet. So that's my first one. And so my second one is right there. I'm gonna make a double crochet starting in the second make a double crochet in the next two stitches so I need one more and then I'm going to make what starts the pattern for this band and that is in this next stitch, which is in parentheses in the instructions, one double crochet, chain three, and then one single crochet. And then I'm going to skip one stitch, make two double crochets. So there's the first double crochet. Here's the second. And then 
I have that parenthesis, so in the next stitch, one double crochet, chain three, and then a single crochet. I'm going to skip one step, stitch, double crochet. And two stitches because now I am repeating that from the asterisk so that two double crochets after my skip stitch and then what's in the parentheses and a single crochet so you will repeat that all the way through so you're going to have two double crochets in each stitch, and then one more double crochet, chain, and a single crochet. You'll skip that one stitch and start that pattern again. So now I've come to the end of the row. I've finished my three double crochets, and then that chain three and single crochet in that same spot as my last double crochet. And I have one of that stitches left. That's the one in a normal repeat you would stitch over, but since that, or skip over, since this is the end of the row, all you do is you make one double crochet in that, and now you're ready to go on to step two, which is chain two, and turn. And the instructions say to three double crochet, chain three, one single crochet, which is that mo motif that we did before, the same number, but this, this time you're gonna work it into that chain space that you've made across. So I've had my chain two, make three double crochets. So one, two, three, Chain three, and then single crochet back into that chain space. And then you just work, go to the next chain space, and do the same thing. That's my third. And single crochet and that you begin your pattern it's hard to see what that's white background so you continue that all the way across okay I finished working all of those motifs into the chains and I've come to the end I have those three double crochets from the beginning of the row and then the chain two and at the end it says end row with one double crochet in the beginning chain so I just go right through it of the previous row and that's how you finish that edge now it says to repeat that step so step number two and it gives you a number of more times so you've had your step one and then your step two and for a size small I need to repeat eight more times so I'm going to do this eight more times, so I'll be able to count one, two, plus eight, so ten. Ten total rows of that, and then that would be the end of my band. So I'm going to repeat step two. So go ahead and chain two, and turn, and begin that row repeat. Okay, so now we finished the 10 total rows, the eight additional repeat rows for the bottom band, and then I bound off. You can see it gives a nice little detail to the front and all around the bottom. Okay, to begin the sleeve, the sleeve is probably one of the sections I've had the most questions on, and it's about this beginning chain. For most half the sizes, it's begin with the chain 18, which I have here. For the other half, it's chain 22. Most people ask, well, this isn't gonna be wide enough to fit around my cuff, and it's not meant to. 
the sleeve starts, instead of working from the cuff up, it works from the shoulder down. And I do this so that it's easier to adjust the length of your sleeve. You can keep on adding rows to make it longer if you need to, or take it off without having to completely redo your sweater sleeve. So for the sleeve pattern, it is very similar to what we did on the bottom of the band. The same motifs of the three double crochet, three chain, and then that one single crochet, you skip a stitch and then move on for the foundation. Um, so here I have my chain 18. So in the beginning, it says to make a double crochet in the fifth chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'll make my double crochet there. Mark it. And then I'm going to make a double crochet in the next one. And then in the next is where you do one double crochet, chain three, and single crochet in that same stitch. Skip one chain, just right there. And then repeat that. Okay, I've come to the end of the row and I have my skip stitch from the last grouping and then I have three open stitches and for that you make your last three double crochet. chain five for the beginning of step two and in the first make one double crochet in the third chain and in the next Mark my chain before I forget. So I have my two double crochets and in that last foundation chain, that or the first one that we made, the last one I worked, do your double crochet, chain three, and one single crochet. And that you've increased one motif. You increase on the beginning of the chain, the beginning of the row, and then the rest of the row you will finish off just like you did on your band with three double crochets and one, three chains and one single crochet in each of the previous rows chain area. All right, so I've completed that in each of the chain spaces of the previous row. And it says to end the row, you make one double crochet in the beginning chain from previous row. And that's the chain section that we marked, so I know exactly where it's at. And there's my double crochet. Now I'm going to repeat that row once more. And why you do that is because you have an increase on this side, you now want an increase on this side. The increases are made alternating sides. Um, so, we chain five again, two, three, four, five. And then third chain, you make a double crochet. That's my third. Chain three and single crochet. And of course, before I get too far along, I wanna move this stitch marker up 
to that beginning chain of that row. Because as you're working back across, we'll look at this end, it, it does start to get confusing where all those chains and stitches kind of end. So this just really keeps it in place. You don't have to count, you know, right away. It's right there. So that was my increase. And then I'll repeat that double crochets in the next chain section and work across. So now I've worked my last motif in that last chain section of the previous row. I end the row with the double crochet. Right there. Now first I get to move on to step three. And with that, it's a regular row, just like we did in the band on the body. So no increase. So chain two, move that up. Chain three spaces, it's your three double crochets. Chain three. And single crochet. And then I'll repeat that through the row. And it says for that row to repeat it once more so it's equal. And that is how you would increase for your sleeves. Now you keep on working that. Now here is a sleeve that I've already started. Here is my foundation chain all my increases and you can see the increases start zigzagging along the side the rows where I do not increase are straight and you work on down and you have a set number of rows that you work straight for the arm and now we're going to get into the section where you decrease so for your decrease as we increase we add it on that way right this way we want to decrease these chain three sections. So we need to get rid of one. So for doing that, as you read the beginning arm decrease step one, you chain two and turn, you will single crochet in this first chain space, chain two again, and we are going to, I have a different type of stitch marker I was using. It still just slips on and you just chain Two, and that begins your chain and your decrease. That's your row that you will work into um, when you come back a row. That's where you will stop. So now, after you place the stitch marker in that chain section, in the next open motif, you do the same three double crochets, chain three, and then your single crochet across. And you will end just like before with the double crochet in that last chain, turning chain. So now I've reached the end of that row. I've made my one double crochet and now I'm on to step two. I'm going to chain two. And then work a normal row of the motifs in each of those chains. Move my stitch marker up. Okay, I've come to the end of the row on the step two, and I'm going to end the row with the one double crochet in the chain from the previous section. So it is very similar as before, but even more harder to see if you don't have that chain marked. So I'll make my double crochet. And I'm going to repeat that row once more, or a normal row working the chain two And then chain the motifs in each of the chains going across. This extra, it seems like an extra row, you work one decrease row and then you do two 
somewhat normal rows, depending on where that chain is. That's the only difference between these two rows. And that is so that we will make the decreases on opposite sides of the sleeve. If we did it every row, the decreases would be too sharp. If we just added one row in between, only one side of the row, or one side of the sleeve would be decreasing and the other one would stay straight. So if we do two, it gets us back to the other side, the opposite side to do another decrease. So we'll finish this row. And there's that last double crochet for that. This would be the step three of the beginning the arm decrease group. And then the next section says repeat the above three steps of the arm decrease as many more times. So this was the first one. For a size small, I need to repeat it three more times. So a total of four decreases. So I will go back up to the step one, chain two. Single crochet, that's my one decrease. Chain two. Mark that step. And then begin the motif and continue on. Okay, so I finished up both of my sleeves. This is one of them. And now in the instructions, it tells you how that you need to start seaming your shoulders of your sweater. So this was the beginning side because there's no buttonholes on this. And I have it to where the buttonholes are on my right. And that's just so that as it's turned reverse, because you'll have your seam on the inside, I seam this way. The buttons will then be on the opposite side and that's my preference of which side my buttons, holes and buttons will be on. So as you laid out, have your buttonholes on the opposite side that you want them to end up at. So I have the two end pieces, the beginning and the end piece of my sweater, meaning towards the center. Here's your back panel, that long strip. And then you can see how this will make your armhole. And what it tells you to do is to seam up so many stitches or rows of this section to create your shoulder area. So I've already done this side. It's easy to count with those ridges from your half double crochets, how many rows. And I've gone ahead and seamed that shoulder. And by doing that, you create you create a pocket to lay in the sleeve so that you can set it in. Whenever I sew it, I have the sleeve turned inside out, inside the garment, so that just like in sewing, right side to right sides on the inside. And then I've popped it out to sleeve, to sew the sleeve together. So you're seeing the two inside sections of the sleeve in the body. And it just, whips together. I did have some areas where, you know, with the the increases, you just kind of do the best you can, get it all to even in. As you block it and you wear it, you won't notice those areas. Same with the sleeve. They kind of just nestle together, those increases and decreases. And as you sew them up, it just joins nice together. And I do a, think of a beginner sewer where you just go in and out through the edges through that last um, turning chains of your sleeve. And then once you get that all done, you're ready to make your collar. So here I am sewing up the second side of my shoulder. I've counted my 10 rows in for the size of garment. I seam together 10 rows. Um, some do 11, some do 12. So 10, 11, 12, you can kind of count those ridges. And I just have a length of yarn with my tapestry needle, your standard sewing needle for these. And I've just laced it through. And all I really do is hold those 
together so that they're even and just a very basic um, non-professional I guess it is it's just a tacking stitch but through those last um, edge rows hooks loops from your half double crochets Okay, I've come to the end, and what I do is I just go on back through the opposite way, and that's to secure it, but also to weave in my end, and it just really helps give that shoulder a little bit more strength from stretching out as well. So I'll go on through with this side of the yarn and then I'll pick up that tail from where I started and I'll weave in that side as well. Alright, and then I'll just trim those down get rid of that and we are ready to set in the sleeve so as I mentioned before this will be the inside the wrong side of the garment what will be towards your body so what I do is I take my sleeve I've left my stitch markers on so that I know which side is the shoulder and which side is the, the cuff and I'm going to lay this inside the garment lining up these edges So that was my starting chain. I'm going to fold that in half and line that up with the seam of the shoulder. And then I just use another slip marker, stitch marker, to mark and hold those together. Pins work as well. I just have these in my, sew my crochet and knitting items. So I use those. And then towards the bottom, here's the edge of where the increases stop for my sleeve. I'm going to kind of tuck those in a little bit because I want to have enough room to sew my sleeve together. And then where the bottom of my armhole on the sweater body is, I'm going to match those two up. Again, leave just a little bit. And with another stitch marker, hold those kind of there in place so that I know that's where those need to go. So then I just need to go around and as so that's the edge of my sleeve beginning line, my beginning foundation chain. I'll mark that so it holds it in place. And around the other side. And then I'm going to pull my sleeve to where it kind of just lays nicely in there around that curve. And as you see, I have the increases tabs. I'm just going to kind of lay those like so, just where it kind of, it doesn't, it kind of puckers, but it just squishes together to lay within the space that you have. And I put those in so that Things don't shift around on me. And I, I'll do that for the other side and then again just with 
that simple stitch, go around, it's very straightforward on these flat sections, but whenever you get to sections that kind of have a little bit of curve, you, what I would do is go halfway down for this one and then jump over and sew over here. That little pocket, that little opening, will blend in with the other lace effects of your sweater and you won't see it. So you just keep going around and sew those together. Sometimes the increases line up between the garment and the sleeve and you work straight around those and things will just look great whenever you have it all done. So here's the sweater that has been turned right side out. You can see how the sleeve where those increases kind of just nestle in and the holes that you will create um, mimic the lace pattern that are within your sleeve. The shoulder seam has a nice structured seam and those rows just blend right in. And then under the arm where you sew the lace together it also just kind of works straight on together. And as you're wearing it, um, you don't even notice where that seam is. So it's pretty nifty. After you do that, you can move on to the collar. Okay, so I've started on my collar and the instructions for the beginning of it, you've done it all before. A lot of it is with the bottom of the band on the sweater. You evenly single crochet around that neck edge and then you work into those single crochets, your pattern of, you'll make a double crochet in each stitch, and then the third stitch, you'll do the double crochet, chain three, single crochet in that same stitch, skip one and begin your two um, double crochet in that next row. For, so that's step one. Step two is a normal um, row of the chain two and then working your motifs in each of the chain spaces from the previous row. Chain three begins that way. In the instructions it will tell you to make so many, um, work so many into the chain three spaces. So for this size it's a small so I've worked my four motifs and then in this next one you will do in the chain three space you do two of those in that same chain space. And what that does is increase at your neck. Um, it makes it wider. So instead of having those increases like we did on the sleeve in the side, it will be more towards the middle of the neck. And so get some more yarn here. So that's the first of the repeats and then I just go ahead without skipping over to the next chain three. Here's my three double crochets, three chains, and that's my increase. So from that um, repeat make those twice and then I will work five for this size normal and then I'll repeat that again. All right, so there you can see where I had the increase. I have created my normal ones for the specified amount, and then I do another increase in that next chain three space. The next row will be just a normal row, no increases. And then you bind off, weave in your ends, give it a good block, sew on your buttons, and your sweater will be ready to wear. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoy your garment as much as I do. Please be sure to like this video and be sure to subscribe so you never miss out on another great pattern from City Farmhouse Studio. Thanks, bye.